Damen und Herren, er steht schon lange auf meiner persönlichen Liste derjenigen Küchen, wo ich gerne mal am Tisch sitzen würde, ganz, ganz oben. Noch habe ich es nicht geschafft, aber ich werde es im nächsten Jahr erleben dürfen. Sie jetzt dürfen hier erleben, einen der großen Köche des Nordens, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, einen barmherzigen Applaus für die Küchencrew von Aspen Holme, Holme Bang. Bitte schön. So, Espen, may I say Espen? Please. Please, okay. Such a lot of good things have been told about you, and uh, such a lot of good critics came to it to you. So how do you handle this? I mean, you must be somewhere up in the sky. I think for us it's very important. <laughs> take it, take I'm it. I'm gonna put it in your hand. Yes, yes, I need it, I need it. Take it in your hand, okay, but okay. speak loud enough. Okay, so. <laughs> and don't be afraid, it's not biting. No, 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 okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so uh, for us it's very important that uh, it's the everyday life that inspires us. Mm -hmm. It's not the accolades, or it's how we get to the accolades mm -hmm. that is important to us. Okay, so nature and the natural flavor is something very important in your kitchen, as we've seen on the pictures as well. So uh, you're working um, special with products around Oslo and around Norway. Yes, we only work with, with products from our region, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, is there enough uh, to, to work with, or is it, is it special to, to concentrate just on, on these Let's say few products. There is an abundance okay. of, of products in our region, uh -huh. as most of you probably have seen with the Nordic cooking and all those. There is there is so many products that has been forgotten that, mm -hmm. that is now now back in the in, in the limelight again. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, and what about I mean Nordic kitchen is is, is in the hype now. Everybody's talking about it. We had the Bokkus door uh, a few days ago in Stockholm with uh, Sweden first, uh, Denmark second, and uh, and uh, Norway third place. So is this is this this kind of a hype uh, going down now, or, or do you feel it up in the, in the Nordic countries that there is a, a hype of Nordic kitchen? Of course, we feel that that before all the restaurants in the region, we struggled and and we were competing for the same 20 guests that was going out to eat in that region because okay. it was not normal to go out to eat in this type mm -hmm. of restaurant. So of course now there is a spotlight on the region and there is a lot of diners that are mm -hmm. flying into the mm -hmm. region to eat. So mm -hmm. of course we feel this that there are more guests in the restaurants. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important for us in the region now to, it's our job to make sure our cooking that in this region doesn't become fragile. Uh -huh. We need to make the roots grow big and strong, uh -huh. so we can we can stand the test of time. Okay, and how do you explain uh, where is the origin of this of this hype in the northern kitchen? Where, where does it come from? No, but it's like in, in in all aspects of gastronomy, the the, the, the spotlight will move around. Mm. Now it's our turn, and it's our turn to make the best of it. You do the best of it, I think. Actually, are they? I think so. Huh? So they're present. Not they're not answering you. You just keep <laughs> going. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Okay. Um, uh, just present me, uh, you, uh, you assistant. This is Richard. Can we clap for Richard? <laughs> He's one of. I think it's it's very important to say that even, even, even though I'm standing here today. Hello. <laughs> Even though I'm standing here today, I think it's important to say that there are a lot of people in our restaurant working a lot of hours every day trying to achieve our goals. So it's unfair that it's only me here, but I brought Richard and uh, yeah. Okay. Just one little question about, yes. about your kitchen. I, yeah. mean, I mean, you're, you're concentrating on nature, natural flavors, yeah. but your kitchen seems to be a laboratory. No. Isn't it? It's just a it looks like. It's just a kitchen. It's clean. I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. So, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, ich wünsche Ihnen jetzt viel Vergnügen mit dem Koch der Köche aus Norwegen, der uns jetzt hier ein paar seiner Ideen präsentieren wird. It's your stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a microphone now, it's fine. No, it's fine. Okay. Just first I want to say I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm a cook, I'm not a talker or a presenter, so normally when we cook in the, 
in the kitchen. We don't have this many people inside. So, and also we are the first one today, so you have to be gentle today. Okay. First off, I want to talk quickly about Maimo. We are a small restaurant in Oslo. Oslo is a medium-sized city, uh, very close to the fjord and the forest. We only have eight tables, and we have 15 cooks to serve those eight tables. Every day, we focus to cook food that reflects the unique produce of our region. We try to show the relationship between the raw produce and the finished product on the plate. In other words, we should always build around and highlight the natural qualities in the produce, and we should never cover them up. The produce we use in the kitchen is cultivated by farmers, fishermen and foragers that have a passion for what they do. It's very important for us that we surround ourselves with people that share the same amount of passion for their produce as we in the restaurant share for our cooking. The people that work in the restaurant must have a relationship to what they do. The people that work in the restaurant must lose themselves in the idea of Maimo. In order to move forward, we must embrace our philosophy in our own lives and immerse into it with our heart and soul. The energy level of our everyday life we bring into the kitchen. Therefore, everything we do ends up on the plate somehow. That's why we have to go into the kitchen and our approach our cooking with the same energy dynamic emotional state of mind that we want our guests to experience in the food. The dishes I'm going to do today represent some from the past and some from the present of Maimo. They reflect what we do in the restaurant and they will hopefully give you an idea of our way of thinking of food. Thank you. You can clap a little bit just to get me started. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay, the first dish, it's, it's a dish um, that back in the days in Norway, you used to serve it at festive um, occasions. Back in the days, Norway was a very poor country. Now they found oil, so now they're fine. You don't have to worry about these things anymore. We can eat it every day if we want. But I think it's important that we still uh, eat it when it's a festive occasion to celebrate the past. It's a porridge made out of sour cream. So it's cream that's been cultivated with lactic bacteria. Then we cook it, and because the fat content is so high, the fat will split out, and we use that fat to bind it together with flour. We serve it always with cured meats, because the sweet and sourness of the, of, the, of the porridge works very well with the salted cured meats. So in the bottom, we have the porridge that we made a little bit in advance, because it takes a very long time. We put it in the bottom of the plate. Over there, we have smoked and dried reindeer hearts. The reindeer heart has been smoked and then it's been cured for up to two years in a barn. We then take it and we, we, we grate it on a microplane to give it a crispy texture. We put that on top. The thought is that when the guests get the dish, they should go through the layer of the salted cured meats and under there there will be a warm porridge of the sour and the sweet. When the guests get it, we serve it with a butter that has been tasted up with vinegar from pickled rowan berries. Just to give can we stop that whining somehow, please? Just to give the salty, caramelized sensation of the butter, which works so well with this porridge. First dish. Should I leave it here? Yes? OK, I'll leave it there. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to clap. You haven't tasted it. It, it probably doesn't taste good anyway, so. 
The next dish is uh, one of the longest standing dishes of, uh, we have on the menu. It's a dish that's been served every single day in the restaurant since we opened three and a half years ago. We get beautiful oysters from the west coast of Norway that's been handpicked for us. They are not too big because I feel when the oyster gets too big, it loses its sharp minerality and turns into a vulgar taste of meat, which mm. I don't like. So we get them when they're just the right size. We put it in the bottom of a plate that is transparent so you can get the sense of the sea underneath the dish. Over that, we're going to put a gel made out of the juice from the oyster and juice from mussels. The idea of the dish is to win the guest over in an early stage of the menu. A menu at Maimo takes about three and a half hours, and this dish has a very welcoming, soothing taste of oysters. Not everybody likes oysters, but I think that everybody likes the taste of oyster. Sometimes oyster can be a bit tricky in the mouth. Here we, we, soften, we soften the mouthfeel to, to give it taste of oyster, but not that difficult uh, way of eating oysters. Over the top, we're going to pour a warm sauce made out of mussels and dill. This is to give some intensity to the dish. The heat will highlight the flavors and will be interesting because of the different textures. You have the cold oyster and the warm sauce. This is my second dish. <laughs> Next up is a, is a dish that, that um, I think showcased the quality of produce in Norway very well. In Norway, we have very cold waters. This allows the fish and the shellfish to grow at a very slow pace. It will develop a deep, sweet flavor that for me, I haven't found anywhere else yet. We're gonna serve langoustine. The Norwegian langoustine can be quite big. Uh, it's almost like a small lobster. We get them in fresh every day, they're very alive, so the inexperienced chefs sometimes get caught on their fingers because of their strong claws. Hmm. I don't care. <laughs> we make the butter that we cook the langoustine in, we make it with pine. And this is an unusual, uh, unusual thing to combine the langoustine with the pine because it's two things that uh, doesn't fit together in nature. But we found that the sweet shellfish and the green notes of the pine really works well together. Mm -hmm. The butter has been vacuumed with pine shoots and then infused overnight in a water bath. We then cool it down and we glaze the langoustine inside the butter. Mm. Richard can hurry up, please. Okay. So after the langoustine goes out of the pan, it will have a nice golden red color. We will glaze it in a gel that we made out of pickled pine shoots from last year. This is to give some acidity and some intensity into the dish. For me, it's very important that the langoustine gets to speak for itself. For itself. We put it on top of pine branches to give it a nice backdrop of the flavor. That's a fly on the food. See? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't clap for the fly. Okay. <laughs> After we present it to the diner, we, we, we talk about it. We pour an infusion of pine and the smell of pine will fill the dining room while they eat their langoustine. My third dish. All right. 
Everybody's happy? Am I moving too fast? Is okay? Nobody answers. Oh, you move along. <laughs> okay. Macro. Uh, in my region, the first signs of the summer is the macro. Um, I wanted to make a dish that celebrated this season, and not just a seasonal dish, because all cooking we do at MIMO is, of course, seasonal. We use the products that are in season. But I wanted to make a dish that really celebrated this time, that when you eat it, you instantly get transported to this exact time. So we took the mackerel, we get them in, we butcher them down, and we cut nice fillets. We then pickle them just lightly in four minutes in vinegar, salt, and sugar. The next thing that are just coming in season now is the shoots from the elm tree. So it was a natural thing for us to combine a dish with these two products that for me celebrate this season right now. This plate is going to take a very long time for me to do. I'm going to try and talk the best I can in between. The mackerel, when we get it in, we get it in when it's three or four kilos. And then we butcher it down and, and, and we get these beautiful small fillets here. The elm tree will have a very clear function. We spray it with a water that is distilled grilled asparagus. So what we do is we grill asparagus and then we distill in, I'm sorry, distill it into a water that tastes of asparagus. We spray it on to underline the, the nutty and green notes of the elm. To go with this, we made a sauce out of grilled asparagus and ramson. So we grilled the asparagus very hard, almost burnt. We put them to a juicer and we monte it up with a ramson butter. We put this in the middle to give the sensation of the sea. This is my fourth dish. One question. One question. So, I have no problem with pine. No problem? No problem at all. <laughs> pine is okay. Yes. Um, but how do you get to the idea to use elm tree? Elm tree of Deutsch heißt Ulme. Yeah? Have you tasted it? Not yet, no. not yet. If you tasted it, you would also use it. So let me taste, <laughs> so let me taste. <laughs> you can taste it. No, but I think it's very important to, to, to think that uh, you should be super careful in nature by eating things you may maybe not know what is, because yeah. you can, you can. <laughs> I was in the emergency room now, uh, once with the numb mouth and everything, so yes. I, I check everything before you taste. But the elm tree is highly uh, edible. I think it was one of those things where, as I said, I wanted to make a dish that celebrated the season. Mm -hmm. Not just show the season, but transport you into yes. this exact moment. Okay. And this exact moment, you have the shoots of the elm tree and the mackerel is coming into yeah. shore. Okay. Mm. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. The last dish I'm going to do is a dessert. Um, we were visiting one of the farms that we have and there we grow uh, black currants, the most beautiful sweet black currants. And when we were walking around, we, we, um, we could smell the black currant. We could smell the, the bush from the black currant, and we could, we, we could smell the freshly cut grass and the wood. So we wanted to make a dish that had those flavors. But it was very difficult for us because the, the how you say, the, the right thing, or the, not the right thing, but the natural thing to do was to take the berries and make a sorbet or make a dessert out of black, uh, black currants. But 
we wanted not the black currant taste. We wanted the taste of the farm, the bush and the everything there. So what we did is we, we picked away the black currants and used them for something else. And then we took the bush with the leaves and the, and, the, and, the, and the wood and we made an infusion of this. And this was some of the, how you say, that was one of the biggest revelations for us this year so far was the actual taste of the black currant bush. It has all the sweet notes of the, of, the, of the berries, but it had also the more interesting notes from the wood and the tartness of the leaves. We wanted to make a dessert. So in the bottom, we have a sweet and slightly bitter malt crumble. Then we took the infusion and we made a sorbet. But the sorbet, it didn't have the right I would say texture to transport the flavors. So we made a sorbet with different types of sugar and added some stabilizers. It means that the texture of it became very fluffy, almost like a marshmallow. We put that on top. When we were walking through this farm and we were walking beside the bushes, we, we of course, we, we eat a little bit of the berries, and we, but we, so we wanted that also the instant kick of the berries. So we took the berries and we made a slightly transparent crisp that when you bite through it, it would have the natural taste of the black currant, and then you go further down, you will taste the terroir and the actual taste of the farm where we grew the black currants. This is my last dish. Thank you. Thank you. Black currant. Yes. Also, Johannisbeere. Falls das Johannisbeere. Nicht. Johannisbeere auf Deutsch. Okay. Black currant. Okay. Um, so, your idea, you, you already told us, your ideas come out of the nature and you try everything. Um, if we invite you to next year, it's not sure you're there. <laughs> I'm more careful now. I have a book <laughs> with me and a doctor is always right behind me with an adrenaline shot. If no problem at all. No, what I want to say is, is that, that trying something new mm. is, is sometimes... I mean, you, you, you need to have a big experience as far as, uh, as fauna and flora is concerned. Yes, of course. So, but I think it's, the, it's a cook's responsibility to know the history of what he's using. Mm -hmm. Just like a, uh, like a journalist should, should know what he's writing about, we should know why we are cooking what we are cooking. Well, for us as journalists, it's easy to, to know about what we're writing about because we're always looking for experts. We ask them and we... We do that as well. We, we, well that's what we do. There's uh, people that know more about pretty much everything you want to know mm -hmm. in the world. So there's always somebody that knows more. To who are you going to, to get knowledge? Oh, it's, diff it's different. We go to... The fishermen know about the fish, the forager will know about the forest and, and what grows in the, in the forest. And our, the guy who makes our flour, he knows about the wheat and the grains and all this. So there's, you need to, as a cook, not forget about the suppliers. You need yeah. to, these are the people mm -hmm. that give you the raw material to achieve perfection. Mm -hmm. um, do you go to, to elder people as well? Elder? Older people, your grandma. I don't for talk example. to older people, <laughs> but, of course. But what do you mean? No, we have, uh, especially for mushrooms and so on, we have some uh, professors in the university that teach us about these things. Mm -hmm. And of course, we do. Uh, the cooks you get in your restaurant, you, 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 you're talking about 15 cooks yep. working for eight tables yes. with four places, I think. Yeah, more we less, do 32, 36. Yeah. 32? Yeah. Also, 32, 36, 36 Plätze. Um, um, how do you get these cooks? Do you choose them or do they choose you? I hope it's a combination. I hope um, we get a lot of applications, of course, and, but I think it's important, like I said, that the people that work in our restaurant, they must be willing to adapt to our way of thinking mm -hmm. about life and about food. Mm -hmm. So if they, can't, um, if they can't adapt to this, then they can't... Uh, transport the feelings into mm. the food. Is it difficult to make them change their mind? No. To get them out of the old ways? No, I don't think so. I think the people that get are happy to learn and they're happy to mm. see something new. What is the average age in your kitchen? 
23? Uh, 23, 24. Yeah, so we're young people. We are young people, yeah, of course. Um, uh, what do they do afterwards? Where do they go? They go to other restaurants, so, uh, and they open their own restaurants and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so, I asked the chief. Now I want, yes. I want the truth. <laughs> why, why, why did you go to work with him? Where did I go? No, why? Oh, why? Because I, I love the idea of the food. I've seen uh, videos and, and uh, blogs of the food and mm -hmm. it, it looked amazing. And so you I thought sound I'd English? No, I'm Australian. Oh, Australian? Yes. Yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> Not a problem. Are you oh, sorry, sorry where, where, where you used to be English. Where from Australia? <laughs> uh, Perth. Perth? Yeah, right across the other side. Must be a big change to go from Perth up to, uh, to Oslo. Yeah. Uh, first, the, fir the, fir the first time I met him in Oslo was he, he has never seen snow. And it was snowing, <laughs> it was snowing the first day. So he was like, what is this? What why, is why is these things falling out of the sky? <laughs> Went from about 40 degrees down to minus five or something. Yeah, like yeah. And yeah. Was, it, was it hard for you to change this, this, this kind of thinking, the old kind of thinking? Or did you come out of a kitchen who uh, was in a, in a modern way of, uh, of, uh, of cooking? Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's how it came out. And it was always good, no matter what you do, to mm -hmm. approach everything with an open mind. So the kitchen and you, uh, you're working in is very international? Yes, yeah. Just about, uh, there's only a couple of na uh, national double ups. Everybody mm -hmm. else is from a different country. Okay, okay. Yeah. Makes it very interesting, but very hard as well, isn't it? I think it's good because we all, all of us bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. We all have a heritage that we bring into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I think it, we, we try to build on the different personalities that are in the kitchen. It's not like a regime. So I think it's important that everybody brings something. And uh, who's taking over your kitchen when uh, your doctor is failing? I've <laughs> I, no. I, I have to produce some sun, so isn't that what you do? I don't know. Okay. Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, Sie sehen, äußerst erfrischend und äh, vor allem nicht extravagant, sondern neu, die Ideen, die hier auf den Tisch kommen, new ideas, not extravagant, but new ideas, never yes. seen before, yes. and this is something really interesting, and that's what Chef Elves is all about. Haben Sie Fragen? Do you got questions? Or everything is okay. Everything is okay. They overwhelmed. You see? <laughs> uh, you're underwhelmed. Nobody knows. <laughs> you're like überzeugt, überrascht, and alles gleichzeitig. So, thank you very much. Thank for you very much. This quick glance. Thank it you. was a quick glance yeah, in your kitchen. It should be. You have to get the full experience. Yeah, you have to exactly. come to Oslo. I'll do it this year. For <laughs> sure. I'll be there uh, in uh, October, I think. Um, uh, so. Also, wir haben sehr viel jetzt gesehen, aber es war ein kurzer Einblick, weil seine Menüs bestehen aus 25 Gängen, alle so in dieser Art. Äh, da hat man doch einiges in den dreieinhalb Stunden zu sehen und zu schauen. Um, uh, I think we, we've got a little gift for you, huh? Reto. But take care, because uh, it's, a, it's a knife, a Kai knife. But take care, mine bit me yesterday, okay? Meins hat mich gestern gebissen, also bitte aufpassen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you thank to you. Espen thank and you. his assistant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.